Hi, everybody. Welcome to Drawing Expressions Live. I am Jedediah DeRay. Uh, boy, I'm so excited for today's class. I really have uh, been thinking about it and been drawing a lot and painting a lot lately. So uh, it's perfect. Uh, it's perfect timing for us. So uh, I'm calling this class three <laughs> is the magic number because, um, you know, when I talk about um, when I talk about good drawing, good design, really elements of good drawing and good design, um, there's a, you know, there's some of the foundational elements that we that we should consider, um, but not to be too overburdened with that, because always, you know, when you're sketching and you're, when you're drawing, it's always good practice, really, um, but it's always good to incorporate some of those elements. And just very quickly, if you don't know, uh, the elements, uh, sort of the basic foundational elements for design, good design, and you can consider this for drawing as well, is color, line, value, space, shape, form, and texture. <laughs> I, always, I always forget that last one. Uh, so those are, th those are the things. So, and you know, and when I'm drawing, when I'm designing, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go right to the desktop so you guys can see uh, what I'm doing here. Uh, when I'm when I'm drawing, I usually try to include one or some of those, as many as I can of those elements, so that it makes for interesting drawing. It makes for good design. I just could practice re really. So um, we have two really good references here that I thought would be great to incorporate, at least. Um, and it sounds like a lot, but you know, it's just it's it's a good number. Three is a good number, right? I feel like. One, three, five numbers like that are good numbers. Uh, so three is a good number. So I want to include at least three of those elements into our drawing. Um, and so first, I want to show you, usually in the beginning of class, I like to show you some of the tools. It's funny, I have so many brushes here, but I'm not going to use all of them. I'll probably just use one. <laughs> and then I have a dip pen and a read pen. Um, so I'll probably be using that most likely for drawing and then a variety of brushes. Usually I have like a wide brush for a wash um, or some kind of coverage and color blocking and round brush as well. And then a smaller brush for, for some detailed work um, on something like this with a fine tip uh, will really help. All right. And I do also have a few colored pencils. I just picked some that are medium to dark tones so I can case in or draw if I need to if I want to um, sketch in with those colored pencils and of course my inks one of these and I already forget which one is waterproof <laughs> I guess we're gonna find out <laughs> um, we'll find out but you know I like surprises right you guys know that about me so Let's get started. It's, uh, you know, let's, you know, we're going to start with this vertical composition here. We're going to go all the way to Venice, Italy. How's that? Uh, how's that for sketching, huh? Not bad, not bad. And this is a nice vertical composition and, and incorporate for today's session. Um, let's see. And not to worry about it because, you know, like I said, if you feel like it's a little bit much you can you can just work on one aspect at a time so today we're going to choose my favorite line um remember the seven we're going to choose three for today line we're going to do color and shape i think that's pretty good to concentrate on right not bad so we're going to concentrate on line color and shape right just really Break it down into the most basic elements, right? And it's just really, we're going to describe things with line. We're going to describe things with color. And we're going to describe, describe things with shape. You can't go wrong, right? And so let's start with this first drawing. Very, very first thing I'm going to do is just to case it in with a pencil so you guys can see with some really good basic line work uh, how to describe something and how to create good design, really. And, you know, there's no really good, perfect place to start. I'm just going to start right across this roof line only because it's got a nice aggressive sort of angle that's going to give me an interesting design. And by interesting, in this case, 
a design that is very dynamic. It's got some good shape to it and uh, got a lot of interesting elements that create some interesting shapes. So I'm just following along this wall and I'm gonna trace it back using a really nice line that I'm just kind of following along a contour line, if you will. Okay. Sort of a cross between a little bit of a contour line and a gesture line and then just kind of letting my hand just guide me. I'm not really thinking too much about where it's going to go, but just I'm interested to see what kind of designs I make spontaneously. And that's already a good looking design there because it's creating that spatial quality in the drawing and also in our reference. And that's the great thing about line work. It's kind of lends itself to creating shapes, right? And that's the second thing. So we're looking for shapes. We're looking for larger shapes. In this case, the most obvious thing is what is the biggest geometric shapes or the biggest subject matter. In this case, it's this building here in the foreground. It's just waiting to be drawn, right? And there it is. That's the biggest one. And when you start really blocking in those shapes and identifying those shapes one at a time, it gets a lot easier really to manage something that might seem complex or feel like it's too complex to draw might be a little bit intimidating to draw right you break it down into smaller and smaller geometric sh shapes and starting from the big ones first right so let's let's equalize this and and i'm kind of widening the reference drawing right because it's very narrow i like to kind of widen it a little bit in this case so let's Let's continue this really nice, interesting line. And I'm just going to follow along where the building decides to go, where it wants to, wants to take me. Right. Sometimes I'll kind of wander within some of the contour edges and just apply some some marks there and if you just follow the big shapes like this and create that 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 line create that shape with that line work you can really really create some interesting drawing right and just kind of following along where things are and letting my hand kind of do the thinking, right? Isn't that nice? So we're creating shape and we're creating interesting line. The line is creating that dimensional space that we're kind of looking in. We're, you know, paddling into this canal right through the heart of it, right through the middle of it. And uh, it's interesting how much you can really describe with just using line work, right? Let's draw that bridge. I think that's really going to anchor this whole drawing. And you could see how we were able to break this down really this this composition very simple sense just by paying attention to what are the most identifiable elements here right in this in this uh in this picture so already i love how this this looks here and if you if it helps you you can put a little frame on your drawing. Um, that's going to give you a border. It's going to give you something to kind of work towards, right? It's almost like you're you're creating 
a film still you're composing a scene in a movie right so you can draw that little square like that you can make it square or rectangular you can make it a poster size whatever you want to do to kind of compose the drawing within that frame and that's going to really help you work on those three elements of, of line and shape especially when you're starting out especially with line and shape so now we've got pretty much the larger shapes covered right we have this nice angle coming off to the right and we have this nice curvature at the left and then the bridge of course connecting the two elements together and uh what's going to tie all of this together really is color because we're working on line color and shape right remember those three um my favorite thing i don't know actually it's tie it's tie between line and color <laughs> i'm i'm very much a colorist so I love how this looks. I might include just a few more. I'm going to use a different pen. This is a Sienna. Officially, it's called Raisin, but it looks like a, a Sienna to me. So I'm just going to include some of the boats off in the distance. There's one here that's kind of floating away. And there's one that's Kind of park there. Looks like there might be a few gondolas there. I don't see the telltale, like, I don't know what you call on the bow, that big curved kind of sculpture that they have on at the end, that curly wooden bow that they have. I'll just go ahead and add it, just pretend it's there. <laughs> and that's going to help us to create even more shape, even more interest to the eye. It's going to help the viewer, going to help the viewer kind of lead the eye towards that horizon. It's almost pointing it, right? It's literally pointing to that area right there. So that's pretty interesting. And then these boats here on the left. If you keep your eye while you're drawing, and keep your eye on the subject and don't worry so much about the drawing being good or bad, it really helps you to identify and study the subject matter much clearer. It allows you to get familiar with the details and different nuances. There we go. That's pretty good. I like that. So look at that. That's isn't that interesting? It's already you know, going right into that paper, it's almost like we're creating this three-dimensional drawing just with casing in the shapes and using that line work, right? And of course, when we talk about line work, we can go, we can just do a whole class on that. We can do a whole semester on that, all kinds. You can spend a lifetime, you know, talking about line and practicing line because there's variation, there's weight, there's contrast, right? You can get into textures and different types of marks. That's all kinds of things that you can use with line. Um, with space, you know, it's it's really interesting because there's all kinds of different ways you can you can draw different geometric shapes, and you don't have to actually, you know, learning or judging by this drawing, you don't have to draw everything to imply that sense of space or that dimensionality, right? So let's do something here interesting. I like to be really spontaneous i have a few sets here i have a pastel set which i love because it has some really nice colors there and mostly because i'm running out of certain colors on this pan set that i have so i kind of like <laughs> use a pastel set to make up some of the colors i might be missing so let's do this i want to i want to paint these houses using the pastel colors because I think that'd be really neat and then we can paint um 
the water, the river, or the canal with some richer colors, some secondary colors. Isn't that really interesting, right? So I'm going to use this big brush and this, this quarter inch brush, these two together, maybe this round brush for the bottom, right? So I want to, if you have a spray bottle, that comes in handy for like, for doing a wash. Um, but you can also just wet the brush and just cover, right? Cover it with water with a little bit of a wash. And keep things nice and painterly, right? Now I'm going to choose just a cooler, kind of a cooler blue for our background. But I'm going to use these pastels for the building. They've been interesting. Kind of a contrast between the, this pastel color palette and the other color palette I have that's very vibrant. And here's where I, I just get nice and loose. I don't worry too much about it. I just want to apply color and mix around the color and experiment with it. Right, and this is where we start to get into color and what it does for this drawing. Right, we start to get into painting now, but really they're working closely together, really to kind of enhance that composition, enhance what it is you're trying to say. So I like that little bit of blue. I don't want to add too much to that. I'm just clearing out the brush now, just a little bit, and. I want to use some of this turquoise. Just slowly getting warmer, warmer and warmer as we progress forward. Right. And sometimes I'll play around with the color a little bit and use it throughout this, use it throughout the canvas. And just keep, keep that wash nice and loose and keep that watercolor paper just glossy and don't put too much water, but you know, just definitely, you'll know when you see a little bit of a, sh a shine on the surface, you kind of see it right here. That's when you know it's a good wash. You got plenty there. I almost think of it as half water and, and half pigment when I'm doing a kind of loose uh, wash like this. So now we're going to start getting into, let's do some some of this pink I've been dying to. I love this pink and this lilac. I've been using a lot of pink in my painting lately. And then some of this line, like kind of mixing the two together, right? I'm going to pick up a little bit more. There we go. <laughs> and sometimes I'll, I'll bring that color into the other wash. That I laid down earlier because it's still a little bit wet, but I am careful not to get things too muddy uh, and not to to compress too many too many colors together and and give them give it them time to dry basically. So here I'm just now we're going for the warmest color that we're seeing. You just go right off that page. Why don't we do that? Why not? Isn't that pretty? Look at that. It just, well, I'd imagine that's what it feels like there.
I mean, just imagine waking up right here by the canal. I, I would probably paint every single day, just like we are now, except I'd be looking out the window. <laughs> it's a nice trade-off. The same thing on this side, except I'm using um, some orange, a little bit of orange. Right. And that's looking good. That bridge, I do want to advance that a little bit more forward. So um, I'm going to use a warm color. But first, I want to. Kind of block it in from the other areas there, just like that. Yeah, it looks good. And then I want to add some of this bright pink here. I'm using less water now. This is where I start to create some heavier marks and some texture with the color. So you can see what the job of each one is doing, you know, with the line work establishing where we're going, where things are coming from, right? Where you want the viewer to look at when they first see this drawing, the space, you know, we're blocking in larger shapes first to smaller shapes to make it easier to identify them and to draw them. And that's also going to help the viewer with uh, knowing what the subject matter is, what the point of focus is, if that's what you're after. And then our color, that color is just, it's almost like it's finishing the other things that are unsaid. And, um, finishing off the description. I like to think with color is, it's um, describing the sense of place and the mood and the vibe or the feeling of, of some place. Wow, look at that, isn't that great? Just, you know, nice and easy, nice soft touch with the, with the pastels. It just gives it a really nice feel. That's kind of what I wanted. So, and then you can just, you know, be careful not to overwork it because that can be, you know, like that happens. Um, you know, when I first started watercoloring, I just would get so excited. I would just pile on the colors and not wait for them to dry and not give them time to dry. And then we'd get really muddy. Um, so just give it time to kind of relax and breathe. And um, and just in areas here that I'm applying a little bit more pigment, there's there hasn't been any coverage. So I'm just touching that up for now. And you can go as far as you want with, with this part of it, right? So the bottom half here, we haven't touched, right? So that's that's interesting. So let's go ahead and create a wash for that bottom half, right? Well, you know what? I, I was gonna consider this as our practice run <laughs> for, for today's session, but you know, that happens all the time when I'm when I, in quote unquote practice mode. And uh, that's when I relax, you know, having fun and just rolling with it and just seeing what happens. And you know what happens when you do that is you create some pretty good drawings, some pretty good paintings. And uh, it's because that expectation flutters right off out in the breeze, goes right away, right? It goes off into the distance. No more expectation, right? No more worries about where it's going to go. You're just here to just enjoy it. I can't stress that enough with with anything that you do creatively. That's the most important thing. All right, so we got a nice wash on the bottom there on the canal. All right, so I'm going to 
contrast this painting, this watercolor on the top. And you see how everything set up kind of in order what we did with line, setting up the line work, describing the shapes. Um, interestingly, the shapes is what comes in first because that's kind of what we're seeing first, right? That's kind of what we're looking for and then what we're seeing and then describing with that line work. So technically the line comes first because that's what we're looking at first and trying to identify, right? So let's add some really vibrant colors. I got this intense uh, paint pan set here. I love how vibrant these are. So whenever I wanna do some really super vibrant watercolors, I mean, they're technically, they're made with ink which is why they're so vibrant. But you can still get this richness if you just use more of a dry brush and less water, but watercolor is more transparent. That's pretty good, I love that blue. And then let's, let's use a different brush so I don't get muddy on this same brush here. And let's add another rich color. Oops, I thought that was green, that's okay. If you haven't noticed that, I love to mix colors. I love creating my own colors and uh, just experimenting with that. All right. Let's mix a couple of different shades here. That's a nice green there. Okay. All right, let's I can actually put that right there. Okay, now still using one brush. I brought so many brushes and we're still using one brush. Not bad. <laughs> we should have called this class. I can I can do this in one brush with one brush. So here we got this kind of midnight, what do we want, want to call it? Midnight purple, royal purple. And I'm just going to touch the watercolor paper with the tip of that brush and look at it, it just pulls down just like that. And uh, and this is where you just want to have fun with, with the water, with the pigment, and just see what happens. Throw caution out the window, and here we go. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Interesting. Now, let's add some of that green. Do I still have some green in there? Yeah, I do. Okay. You're not dry yet, green. We're still, we didn't forget you. Just kind of mix up these colors here a little bit. That's a little bit dark. And I like the surprise that happens. Sometimes you get the little whoops that happens. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. But you know, work with it. That's what makes it fun. Can you imagine just knowing what's going to happen each and every time you go to sit down to draw your paint? That wouldn't be very fun, huh? Yeah, so I don't want to get too muddy here i don't want it to get muddy so i like how that water just looks like it's moving looks like it's rushing towards us so that's that's pretty cool right and then just touches here and there to add a little bit of tone shading to that background right but it's still still a little bit wet so we're we're taking advantage of that by creating this right really nice loose uh wash right and now let's like take a look at what we have just with three elements right three elements we're able to create this 
relatively quickly. I mean, we made an interesting sketch. That looks better. You can see the richness of the color there. We'll zoom in a little bit here too. There we go. Right, look at that. Isn't that interesting? You can just feel like you can just go right into this drawing. It's no longer a flat piece of paper. Right, this world is there. It's alive. You can walk right into it practically. Right. So once this dries, I'm going to draw with some ink. I think it'd be fun. And that's really where we start to emphasize the line work, um, the line quality in the drawing. And that's going to really create a really interesting, very dimensional looking drawing with lots of perspective. Right. So this is going to help us. You can see how much the color really helped with the mood of this whole this drawing and uh, how much it helped to identify all of those larger shapes and blocking them in first. Right. So while this is drying, we can try something a little bit different with the other drawing. So I'm going to put this aside just temporarily, just so that it has time to dry. You could see, I mean, you kind of turn it on its side, you could see it's a little bit glossy, right? There you go. And that's how you know it's still a little bit wet. And plus when you, when you touch it, it's still a little bit cool to the touch. So we're gonna set this aside. Better yet, I'm gonna tear a piece off from this pad. That way, we can just go right on the next page. <laughs> You'd think it'd be that easy. <laughs> there we go. All right. So here's what we're going to try different. We're going to go right for just drawing it, drawing the heck out of it first, kind of like working backwards or making or maybe working inside out, right? So we're not looking for shape so much as we're just going to just throw some line down and let the line do the thinking for us meaning we're just going to be instinctive and just draw what we see and not think twice and just let that line run right so i have a dip pen here i have a bamboo pen here and i've got some ink uh oh that's a dangerous combo for me i've got these two things here my best friends right i can do so much with that and i love it i'm happy happy so i'm going to first play with this reed pen do i have enough ink in there yes i do okay all right so let's brighten up that bit make this adjustment there there we go and Again, like I said, I'm not going to think think about it. I'm just going to do that and just see what happens. Right? Why not? It's almost like you're forcing the mistake to happen the so-called mistake in this case and adjusting to it but not wanting to change it not wanting to to alter it but just reacting to it and in a sense that's also good design also good elements of of drawing and design because you're no longer trying to to fix it you're just trying to react to it and i think that's when interesting things happen when you react to things happening and instead of trying to change every single little thing you're just making your adjustments artistically you're just kind of along for the ride right so here i'm just making some really fun interesting lines that have texture and movement and character. I'm not thinking about any of those elements, but interestingly enough, and this is why I'm showing you this, even spontaneously like this, those elements 
are the staple. They always come to fruition every time, right? It's just, it becomes a natural thing. It's almost like, you know, you gravitate to certain ideas just subconsciously. I'm just going to add a few more marks to make things interesting. And sometimes I'll use a twig or a branch or something like that to, to give me different types of line intensity and line weight and, and different textures and marks that give me a different kind of feeling for each drawing. Right, so I like that. I like what's happening there. I think I might just do one more just to designate that dog right near us. Just like that. Right? So I'm gonna set this aside, put it in other water, not in our watercolor water. So here's another thing that I want you to do. Take your finger or your brush, or maybe one of your fan brushes, or maybe one of your square brushes, and just do what your mind is telling you not to do. And go ahead and mess it up. It's gonna be okay. You know, what else happens is, we're still working on those elements. We're still conscious of them. But now we're making those adjustments. And also we're welcoming spontaneity. We're welcoming them as what we normally, what most people might consider to be mistakes, right? It's almost like we're that much more comfortable now because We've made a mistake. We smeared it. Oh no, what, what's going to happen? Um, well, lots of interesting things really because now we're okay with it. Isn't that great? Isn't that such a freeing kind of feeling to know that it's going to be all right? In fact, it's going to be more interesting now, in my opinion, because I'm not really that nervous anymore about it or I'm not apprehensive about where it's going to be. I'm now curious about where it's going to go. I'm interested, right? I'm vested. So let's let this dry. And I love doing this. I love kind of switching back and forth between the two. Um, as long as we're working on one thing at a time, that way it doesn't feel too overwhelming. Too overwhelming. Let's see if this is nice and dry. It's almost there, but we can kind of speed it along. So if you want, I think we'll give it another couple of minutes. We did use pretty heavy wash. Now let's use our dip pen, right? Because we're gonna we wanted to draw the heck out of this scene here. And I'm just gonna start from the left side here and just go right into it. Don't think twice, just draw, right? Just describe things and see what happens. And I tell you to work spontaneously like this because you'll start to recognize things. You'll start to recognize patterns and shapes, contours and dimension and spatial quality and spatial qualities in the drawing, you'll start to recognize them. They'll start to become interesting to you. And those are the kinds of preferences that start to happen the more you draw, the more you just kind of practice. Let's draw this 
looks like a platform almost. It's like a, I wonder if it holds boats or actually it's probably not that big. I wonder if it's a tour boat or some of some sort. You'll see these a lot in Paris and in Italy in the canals. And then there's a couple of smaller ones here. <laughs> kind of scooting along. There we go. And just go with the flow and see where the drawing goes and where it wants to take you. And, you know, when I say that, specifically what I mean is that I'm not thinking too hard. I'm not thinking too much about what kind of drawing is going to happen. I'm just putting marks down that I think I'm going to find interesting. And the more I work that way, the more automatic it becomes, really. So what do you think? Do you think our watercolor is dry? I think it is. Let's check on it. Just going to add one more bit of information here just so that we're set up for the next part of this drawing. Challenge, a little bit of challenge with this dip pen and a really nice watercolor paper is that it's got a lot of tooth, a lot of grain or a lot of texture on the paper. So it's not as smooth to draw on with a dip pen, but that's okay. I kind of like when you use or combine different tools and media that you're probably not supposed to combine. Makes for some pretty interesting art, right? So already look at that, right? It's starting to happen. And I wasn't conscious of it. I'm, you know, it just automatic. I just wanted to draw uh, what I found interesting, right? What I wanted to describe here and it's starting to look um, starting to look like I like there's something interesting happening. All right, so let's set this aside and let this dry. And the ink dries a lot faster than the watercolor, of course, but it still can be smeared. So look at that, right? Interesting. It's already got a, a different mood compared to our watercolor. Look at that. Look at the difference between the two, right? And interestingly, in another class, we might do something where I'm just taking two completely different different types of different methods and seeing the drawing or painting the same the same subject, but using completely different methods. We're sort of doing that here, right? But we're concentrating on learning more about line, color, and shape and how those three work together. So if those you know, those elements of design are fundamental. You know, you don't, I don't want them to, I don't want you to have to worry about them when you draw, but they're really, really good to just keep in mind. Sometimes it helps to just work on one of those things if it feels overwhelming. Like you might want to work on today, I'm going to work on the shape and recognizing shape and drawing things geometrically. Today, I'm just going to work color, just paint abstractly or just paint with all kinds of color and mix, mix media and just see what happens when you when you use all kinds of color because expressing with color is very important being able to describe things that way right so let's get back to that speaking of color really like how this is going now it's dry it's dry to the touch not cool anymore it's cool but it's not watercolor cool <laughs> so let's pat this dry still a cool drawing we're making a cool drawing just to make sure. There we go. Right. And um, let's see here. Let's do this. We're kind of working 
front to back and backwards and forwards, right? Kind of interestingly in different directions with the two different styles here and just seeing what happens. Um, I kind of want to do this with this drawing since, since we're working with color and line, we think about combining line with color, you're creating texture, right? So that's pretty interesting. So that's the thing. I want to try this is just creating some different types of marks with these pencils to just show a little bit of texture and what happens when we do that. Right, so I'm just gonna create some interesting marks here. We'll see what happens. I have more pencils here. I just want to keep things kind of in order and just keep it to a minimum, really. There's lots of windows there. There's, there's seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. I hope everybody's looking out of those windows and painting this canal. All right, so that's interesting. Let's see if I have other colors here just to kind of mimic what color palette. There we go. We got some pink and rose. That works. Okay. So just creating just some different textures really. So we're combining line with color to create this texture, to create the shape, to enhance the shape. The bridge here, a little bit of detail. On the other side, It's looking good. All right, so all kinds of interesting things happening just by doing that. It's kind of forcing it, right? Just kind of forcing the experimenting to go and see where it takes you. Maybe add a few detail lines with it. Right, now, Actually, one last thing. So I have this blue here. This is actually a blue violet. Let's do this with it. Oh, just like that. And then you look at all those marks there. Just nice and scratchy, creates that texture for the walls and the brickwork. And even the sky has some interesting texture. All right. So just playing around really with those three elements, what we can what we can do with them. All right now. Let's see what happens if we apply the ink, some ink to our drawing here. We did that first with that other drawing, but here we started really with, with line and color. So what's happening now is I'm, I'm experimenting with 
mixing the three, those the three that we're working on, line, color, and shape, but mixing the order in which we execute them, right? And that's making for different results. All right. Just starting from the back here. And what if we left out a lot of the detail? What if we just included just some of the detail that we wanted to draw in here? That would be interesting, right? And that's the kind of thing that you can think about when you're, when you're drawing in your sketchbook, when you're urban sketching, when you're on location, is the what if. What if I do this? What happens if I do that? I wonder. That's a great thing to consider when you're on location. Let's see here. Let's straighten this out there. There we go. I love the feeling that I get when I'm drawing when it's almost like you're on autopilot and it's just happening right in front of your eyes and it's, it's almost like you're just watching a story unfold and you're not overthinking it just happening right in front of your eyes Now I want to, I love this line here. So I'm gonna really embellish that, and really go after that. Let's have fun with that line. And this is a really good example. Let's pause here for a second because tend to sort of just really into it, into the drawing, and forget about everybody and the whole world around me. <laughs> and look at that. Look at how the three elements that we're talking about this are just working together so well. Line, color, and shape all working together to create this world. It's really just a magic trick, ain't it? Just a sleight of hand, right? We went from this to a whole world we're creating now. Right, and that's just the three. Imagine if you incorporated all seven. Look out! That's a very dangerous combo, huh? <laughs> now, I'm going to turn this a little bit this way. I am the master of smearing ink, as you can see. <laughs> they they ought to give away if they gave away PhDs in smearing ink. I definitely yes, please. <laughs> I just uh, resigned to the fact that I'm going to smear it on all my clothes and all over me. The interesting thing is between the watercolor paper and the kind of waxy pen pencil that we're using, it does break up the the ink line occasionally, and uh, rather than rather than fighting that, you know, because we're talking about just welcoming that change and going with it and just transitioning along with it, I like that it's breaking up the line. It creates some interesting different textures as well. Here we have strong line coming straight down 
just like that. And then some people, of course, you can't forget about the people. Is there no one in Venice? Yes, there's a lot. These lucky people here. Great, there we go. Right, so looking at the two real quick as we approach the last half of the class, take a look at this, right? Isn't that interesting? Right, between the two, what's happening between these two, right? really depends on what you want to capture what you feel like right and um i'm gonna go with my gut here actually this is no it's a blender pencil it's not gonna work for us i'm just gonna go with my gut and i'm gonna draw a lot more on this piece and uh, I almost dipped my colored pencil in my ink in my ink wall that's how excited I am about this drawing <laughs> as long as I don't drink the ink wall, I think we're in good shape right so it's almost like we're working backwards in this case right it's a little bit of that and this is, you know, the pencil is going to allow me to kind of get more flow, flowy with the line work. Really wanted to make quicker work of it, not because I'm in a hurry, but because I want the line to be really loose and just kind of free. Right, I might switch between two pen, two different pencils here because I want to keep it nice and sharp and keep the line moving, basically. Don't forget the windows. Here we go. And what happens if we do that? If what happens if we kind of flip it the other way? And it's almost like we're working the opposite direction, working backwards. But really, there's no right or wrong way. It's just your way. It's just what you want to do, what you want to play around with, whatever feels right. Right. Look at that. Look at all of that space that's happening. It's almost like it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Right. Isn't that interesting? And just bouncing back and forth between the read pen and the dip pen. And, and uh, I know we haven't applied any color yet, but I want to show you. I have something in mind for, for casing this drawing in and, and rounding it off. Finishing with a, a nice flurry. Okay. 
you see how that line kind of breaks up in, in the paper? I think that's, that's kind of neat. It was unintentional. It's almost like a welcome surprise. And, you know, that's an example of what I was talking about when you sort of welcome these serendipitous things that are happening that are beyond your control. And um, you get more comfortable with, with uh, adjustments as an artist. Right? So I want to make sure I have enough time. Okay, we have a little bit more. I just want to make sure I have enough time to show you what I want, what I'm interested in doing for this one. And this also answers the question because a lot of people ask me is how I start my drawings first. There's no template really. I, I'd hate to have a template to do anything in art really. It's just all about how you feel, what you feel like doing for that minute, for that day, for that week, you know? It's all about what you feel like experimenting with or what you feel like learning. I don't know why I love drawing these gondola spikes. <laughs> They're so fun to draw. All right, I'm going to slide this over so you can see it backwards. There we go. Look at what's happening there. Isn't that cool? Let's raise this up even more so you can see what I'm seeing. Right? And that's just playing around. We're just playing around, aren't we? What'd you do today? I played around. And then show them what you got. Show them how you played. And wow. Right? And that's just letting go of any weight that you might have on your shoulders, any expectation you might have about a good drawing, a great painting, or a spectacular design. At the end of the day, I think I'm pretty confident to say that I I'm happier when I learn something more than doing something that somebody might consider great or somebody might consider a good design or a good drawing. Those things are good too. It's just, you know, I, I think that's where it gets interesting for me. And uh, it never gets boring. Right? And Here, it's just we're creating all of that dimensionality, all that space and volume with just line, right? So I want to do this for the end of this drawing. I'm going to tilt this to the side for a second, just so I have room to do this. One last bit here. Because I kind of like how it's just jutting off the page. It's almost like Venice is alive and coming right out as it's moving. I mean, it's quite literally sinking, right? I mean, it's, I hope that they're able to recover or they're able to do, some, do something about that and save the city that way. Because I heard it's sinking pretty, pretty rap rapidly. All right, so I don't want to overwork. I just want to do that because I do want to do something here to finish out this drawing. But let's visit our old friend, the watercolor and see how it's doing, right? And you could see there's pools in there of of ink, right? You can smear it with your hand. You can smear it with a brush. Do what you want with it. I'm going to let it dry for now and uh, set this aside for, for a second. And here we're just, you know, it's almost like it's 
saying the same thing, but speaking two completely different languages, right? I love that. And uh, I want to explore with more pencils now what kind of mark making I can do. It's interesting because I love these textures that we created, right? So take a look at that. I think that's really interesting. And that's what it's all about. It's really just discovering certain things, right? And uh, this is signed here. I'm kind of tempted to add even more marks. If you have pastel or oil pastels, uh, I would use the oil pastels last because they're very thick and you can't really use any other medium on top of it. All right, so let's add some white to the bridge here. just to create some texture because I really love the marks that the paper, the paper has a nice rough texture to it. And uh, you can hear I'm, I'm pushing down pretty firmly just to, cr to create almost like a sandpaper, whoops, a sand, a sandpaper sort, sort of uh, look to the to the uh, pencil to the color almost like you're taking sandpaper to it and you're just kind of scratching the surface with it creating some different marks right so you can just keep playing around with that and uh and just adding just a little bit more information let's do that to the right side of it to kind of round out this one here I kind of want to follow this shadow here and then around the boat. Underneath the bridge, there's another boat right there. The interesting thing about this drawing is that I kind of want to leave it alone because I like how loose the drawing is and I don't want to do too much to it and that's an interesting thing that happens sometimes when you know the design is in such a way that you know it's interesting that it it looks interesting and and uh it's unlike something that you've done and very original in that sense and i think it's because the way that i kind of broke up the process of this in a different way and kind of changed things up a little bit right so just adding a few things every now and then And then just stopping just because I want to trust my instinct about, you know, what I want this drawing to do there. I'll stop there. <laughs> right. And only because what we were doing with the pencils, I like this amount of line, I think, for this drawing. I think that feels right with the pencils now. Right. And I think finishing with the pencils. Let 
because it creates we're, we've been creating that kind of sandpaper texture to a lot of it. That's red right there. And you could see there where, like, when we added that bit of texture right there, right, you could see it's kind of ghosted and it creates some brushwork, some resistance there. It's almost because it's it's almost like a resist, a resist that's happening with the different layers of color. And it starts to have some interesting marks and different luminosity with the color. Right, so let's pause here for a second just to kind of take a breath and see where things are going. And also to remind you that you don't have to feel like keeping pace with me. And if you want to go faster or slower, it all depends. Your pace is the right speed to go. Uh, the great thing is you can watch the video and um, kind of recall things if you need to and uh, go your own pace right and I just I love how it's almost like I'm treating the pencils it's almost like we're painting with them because it's creating some different layers of color almost like lasers with acrylics or whirls right it's creating these different these different tones of color and light, right? So I love what's happening here with all of this color starting to kind of come together and uh, make sense, right? And let's do this. I want to add I thought I was done with the watercolor with this, but I just feel like it because I feel like I just want to add a few more bits of color just to make it really bold. And uh, using the smaller, the smaller square brush that I have, right? I'm going to create, I'm going to make, mix a little bit of just a nice red. A slightly cooler, cooler red. Right, and just, it's almost like it's mixing with the pencil because it's very waxy and you could see some of the color from underneath coming through. Yeah. And sometimes it takes a whole journey, right? It takes a whole process to get to somewhere where you feel like it makes sense now why you went through all of those steps it just makes sense that it wouldn't have happened if you didn't take all of those steps and then just pure color really just feel like just dabs of pure color that line 
painting here, here and there. It's so rich. And a few more, especially when we get further back. I really want to give it that sense of space. Just like that. Right, you could see I that's kind of what I had in mind. I really wanted to put in some pure color to make it even more vibrant. Right, so you can go as far as you want with this. Um, and just you know, if you're not sure where you're going to go with it, then my suggestion is to just kind of back off and let it sit for a bit that's always smart to do that and um see what happens you know maybe wait a few minutes or an hour maybe wait till next day and sometimes what often happens with me is i'll push something you know i'll put something aside to kind of let it relax let things kind of breathe and then the next day i come back to it and i realize you know what this is done i don't need to do anything else to it it's good right so Let's take a look at what we have here. I feel like I can just go on and just do the third and fourth and fifth. What do you think? Let's just keep drawing. Just keep experimenting. Let's just do this all day and see what happens. Can you imagine? We just didn't stop, right? And also, if you want to share your work, I'd love to. I'd love to. Uh, you know, you guys can share them in our network at Drawing Expressions. Uh, people love to see your drawings and your creativity and um, get some great feedback as well. Uh, but let's take a look at what we have here. Let's do a little recap. So we did, you know, we we talked about color, line, value, space, shape, form, and texture, <laughs> right? And I uh, used a, a fountain pen and dip pen and my watercolors and some colored pencils. And we talked about the elements of design, the fundamentals of design and how, how important they are with uh, good drawing and good design work but really just practicing just practice right there's a number of ideas and approaches and different elements that you can utilize to make a good drawing a decent drawing or in interesting drawing creative drawing uh you know just exploring what those things are maybe combining them but really it, essentially working on one of those elements at a time is smart just working on one, just, you know, today I'm going to work on color. Today I'm going to work on shape, right? That's really smart. All right, so let's take a look at what we did here. So first we have lots and lots of vibrant color, right? Talking my language here. But here, you know, we established it in that, in that interest, that right order of things, really, the common order of things is when we looking for those shapes first, like use a pencil, you can find, kind of point it out. Looking for those shapes first, this this strong, very aggressive, you know, angle of these buildings in a row, and then this one building just in the foreground, just kind of popping right into, coming, bleeding right off of the page. That's, you know, the first and second big shapes that we see, that we identify. And then, of course, this really perfect angle this almost 90 degree angle to the left of this canal it's very narrow we kind of widen it right so it's almost like we're seeing that first right what are you what are you looking at versus what are you seeing right there's it's a difference and uh and that's interesting to think about and then we when we see that when we start to see it it starts to make sense okay this is what i want to do with it now right um then you go in with line and with color and it's great, you know, when they work together as a team, it's almost like a great basketball team or or, or a baseball team. Um, you know, it's just three working together, really. And uh, and then just because when they really start to work together, things just start to percolate and things come up and interesting kind of bits come up that are surprising and new and never get boring. And that's really comes from working with those elements together. So try different things and, and uh, try some different elements that you've never tried before, right? And of course, this I thought is just as interesting because I purposely 
was just not thinking about any of those things, anything about line, color, shape, form, value, and space, or texture, just drawing, just, you know, just put the pedal to the metal and just go and see where it goes. And interestingly, it kind of takes care of itself. It kind of works its way there, doesn't it? It just kind of gravitates to that naturally. And, you know, it's the more you draw, the more you practice that. But more importantly, what I want to stress is the more you play, the more you experiment, and the more you just have fun with it, it just becomes a natural thing. It's almost like it does it itself, right? Um, and, and, you know, I wanted to save this for last because I don't have my pastels with me, but that's okay. No worries. We'll add a little bit of color to this because I love adding a little bit of color. All right. What color do you want to choose? Something warm, something cool? What do you think? <laughs> Let's go with something really vibrant. How about an orange? Let's go with orange. Now, do I have room? It's okay. All of my colors mixing together. <laughs> Just a nice, strong, vibrant orange. Oh, you can't see it. There we go. <laughs> Probably helps. There we go. And I'm not going to use much water. I'm I'm going to use mostly pigment here. Right? You can see how much I'm using. And I like the width of this brush because I'm able to... Let's see what we want to do here. Let's do this. Turn it on side. Right, and just some yellow. Go. I just use a little bit of water, just just a touch. And I want that pure color on there. There we go. That makes me happy. Right, and we can kind of soften up the edge a little bit. There, that makes me so happy. It feels alive, doesn't it? <laughs> it feels alive. <laughs> it's moving, it's going, right? Things are happening. So that's just a little bit goes a long way. Isn't that interesting? You know, and that's really those three elements working together so perfectly, I feel like. And when they do work perfectly, it's just fun. You know, it's not that it's a perfect drawing. I just mean that they uh, make it easy. It makes it fun and interesting uh, to work that way. So that's interesting, just seeing the two of them combine. All right. So practice that. Begin with a fun line drawing if you want. Start with a focal point. That's That's really important. Um, and, uh, you know, thinking about what it is and why it is that you're drawing that environment, what you choose to, uh, what, gra what gravitated you, what, what really, uh, compelled you to, to choose that location, uh, and think about your marks and relaxing your hand. And also, uh, and when it comes to space specifically, think of it as a hierarchy of information, right? The, the biggest information, the largest bit of information is really the most important, that's what you want to describe first and foremost. And that makes it so much easier, especially if you're drawing something very complex, right? You want to very simplify certain things just to make uh, make sense of it. And it's just a really good way to draw in perspective, to draw, you know, to kind of add for shortening and to add, you know, dynamic uh, and spatial qualities to the drawing as well, right? So experiment with that. And thank you so much.
for joining me today. I feel like I want to continue this drawing. I feel like, I don't know, what do you guys think? I feel like this drawing is pretty much done. There's a few things that I probably am going to try and play around with. I'll see how I feel about it later, but I love how this drawing feels. It's got some interesting things happening to it that I want to experiment with more. And this just reminds me how much, how solid those, those fundamentals just really come together. Uh, I'll probably add a little bit more information, especially the river here, uh, which is so important to where we're at, right? On that note, keep drawing and don't forget to combine one or two or three of those things. Keep it simple and don't, don't worry about it so much. Just have fun, right? I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care.